welcome to the course business analytics and data mining modeling using r so in uh, in previous lectures uh, we have been discussing logistic regression and uh, in a previous uh, uh, lecture uh, we talked about uh, different aspects of uh, interpretation uh, model interpretation in logistic regression so we'll uh, discuss further on the same interpretation of results uh, and to uh, we'll further discuss uh, the issues uh, that could be there because of the uh, the, because of the uh, non-linear uh, non-linear function and three different models that we typically use uh, the logic model the uh, odds model and the probability model so let's just start so in the logic model that we typically use uh, let's uh, write a particular logic model so if this is the model that we have let's say we have a p predictors so if we have p predictors and uh, this is our model so how do we interpret results so once we have built the model we'll have estimate of all these values so all the betas right all the betas so these estimates uh, will have these estimates we will have so how do we interpret the results because uh, as you know that the logistic regression model is typically used for the classification tasks and we have already understood that uh, the our dependent uh, variable outcome variable is uh, categorical and so we have already understood all these issues right so uh, we look to estimate probabilities values right so we look to estimate probabilities values and for that uh, we need this particular formulation logic so once the model the estimates have been uh, computed uh, using uh, these particular estimate uh, we can use uh, the logic values to compute the uh, corresponding to compute the corresponding uh, probability value as we saw in the uh, previous lecture as well uh, right so uh, in the previous lecture as well uh, this particular thing we saw there that the corresponding using the logic value we can compute the corresponding uh, probabilities values now the interpretation uh, remains slightly tricky for example uh, here in this case if there is a unit increase in these x1 x2 these predictors so we have you know uh, you know unit increase uh, one unit one unit change in these values so the uh, corresponding change in logic values uh, value would be based on uh, these uh, estimates so beta 1 beta 2 right uh, because uh, simply you can see that uh, beta 1 x1 and if this was the uh, uh, you know previous value and if there is uh, a one unit change in the value of x1 so from this you would see that the uh, corresponding change in logic value is uh, going to be just uh, beta 1 so this is uh, so betas they are the uh, the additive factor uh, the additive factor that actually changes so irrespective of uh, you know the values of x the actual specific values of x the change in terms of change if we look to interpret this in terms of change uh, all depends on the beta values so that is the same thing is mentioned here so beta uh, plays the role of an additive factor so if there is if so if there is a unit change in uh, any of the predictors values the uh, the respective beta change would be seen in the uh, our logic values right so increase in x would uh, lead to corresponding increase in logic values if beta is positive right if beta is uh, negative so the direction would change and uh, therefore any increase in x that is predictors values would lead to a corresponding decrease in logic values and in a previous lecture itself we have understood the relationship between logic and probabilities values right so we had created this plot 
wherein we saw the relationship between p and logit values right so from this also we can understand uh, that if there is some change uh, you know if there is one unit change in the predictors values and beta is positive uh, the logit values will also increase so therefore the probability values will uh, logit value will increase so therefore the probability value will in also increase and uh, that would uh, lead to increase in acceptance of for example uh, the promotional offer uh, example that we have been using so uh, th this increase in probability is value will actually increase in the acceptance uh, level of uh, promotional offer right however as you can see from this particular curve you know if the uh, the corresponding increase is uh, you know in this particular zone uh, uh, you know zone then probably the acceptance it might not reach to the acceptance uh, you know uh, level it might not be classified as class 1 right uh, this is the zone where uh, the probability is value significantly start to change so this value is around 0 as we saw in previous lecture so you would see that uh, the values logit values close to 0 we see a sudden uh, we start to see a sudden spikes in probabilities values and then finally it becomes 1 right so uh, the interpretation however for the interpretation purpose if we are using logit model right logit values to interpret the results if beta is positive the uh, one unit change in x1 x2 the predictors value will have the corresponding change in the logit values and therefore higher probabilities value and therefore higher level of acceptance rate uh, for promotional offer in this particular example that we have been using so uh, for any value of x so uh, for any value of x the interpretive statements of results uh, they are going to remain same so increases either by this additive factor you know beta 1 beta 2 depending on the predictor now uh, let us move to the uh, odds model so in odds model the interpretation would change so let us look at the odds formulation now so uh, if we go back to our odds formulation right so odds formulation if we go back it was e and then minus minus of as we can see in 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 this uh, e and then this is the formulation e to the power beta 0 beta 1 x1 beta 2 x2 up to beta p xp so if there are p predictors So, if there are p predictors, uh, this is going to be the formulation, uh, odds model formulation, right? And since we have already uh, estimated these beta zeros, so these beta zeros have been already estimated, uh, right? So they can be directly. So values of these, uh, uh, you know, coefficients, uh, the estimates can be directly plugged in into this model as well, and we'll have the odds model, right? <coughs> So we can rearrange this. So we'll have e beta zero. This is going to be uh, like our, uh, you know, constant, uh, you know, multiplicative factor, and then we'll have uh, e. We'll have e beta one, right? And uh, we can write in this fashion x one, and then we'll have e beta two. Then we can write in this fashion x two, and then we'll have e beta 3 x 3 and in this fashion and finally we will have e beta p for the pth predictor and x p. So uh, you would see uh, that uh, this particular uh, model right you would see for this particular model uh, for a for a unit change if we do a unit change in x 1. So, if x1 becomes, uh, you know, if we do a unit change x1 plus 1, so you would see e beta 1 and uh, x1 plus 1. So, effectively, what we get is e beta 1. So, that uh, we get a multiplicative. So, all these are multiplications, right. So, this particular model is also the multiplicative models, 
uh, so the what we actually get is multiplicative factor e beta so for all the uh, predictors x1 x2 to xp uh, you know if there is uh, one unit uh, change in in those predictors values the corresponding change in the odds of uh, accepting the offer is going to be e to the power beta and this is going to be uh, the multiplicative factor so th that this particular values times so the odds value will increase uh, by a factor of this so earlier if the odd value was let us say 1.2 so now it will have an increase in e beta times 1.2 <coughs> if all other variables and everything else is kept constant right so, uh, if we look at the logit uh, model that we discussed right so there it was the additive factor right so in the logit model we had the additive factor and uh, you know if one unit change uh, would uh, increase the value the corresponding increase uh, in logit values would be by beta values now it would be uh, so this would be plus you know uh, that particular beta now here it would be you know e beta so this would be a multiplication uh, so uh, if there is an if there is a unit increase in predictors value so uh, the uh, corresponding increase in odds values would be by a multiplicative factor of e to the power beta so increase in x1 so let us go back to our slide uh, so you can see here that if, if beta is greater than 0 so if beta is greater than 0 So, increase in x1 would lead to increase in odds value, right? And if beta is less uh, than 0, then increase in x1 will lead to decrease in odds. However, as you see that uh, this is an uh, you know uh, exponential formulation, so you would see the values will range from 0 to infinite. So, uh, the values. Uh, you know so therefore even though the uh, uh, beta values uh, even though even though the beta is less than 0 the values will still remain greater than 0 for odds right and uh, you would also see that uh, in the logit formulation that we had a logit formulation was like this In the logit formulation, uh, formulation, uh, the uh, values uh, which are which are going to be negative, so the beta which are going to be uh, negative, so they will become uh, a value less than one between zero and one, and uh, the betas which are going to be positive, uh, they will become values greater than one. So, for example, if beta one was positive, and beta two is uh, was uh, you know uh, negative then uh, uh, this one would be this particular value would be greater than 1 and uh, this particular value beta 2 was negative this would be less than 1 how less than 1 however the values uh, you know even this value as well would be greater than 0 so uh, the negative uh, values there in logit model uh, transform into a, va a smaller values in this odds model and positive values uh, in logit model transform into a value greater than 1 in this particular model. And uh, the interpretative statements, uh, so they can be still made irrespective of the predictor value. So, irrespective of the uh, for any value of x, uh, unit or one unit change in uh, that uh, particular value of x will lead to a corresponding increase of uh, multi, uh, by in multiplicative factor of e beta in the odds value. So, for both logit models and uh, odds model, this is how we can go about interpreting uh, making uh, interpreting the results. However, if we look at the probability model, right? However, if we look at the probability model, so the probability model is going to be like this.
so this was the uh, probability model that uh, we can use uh, so here in the in this uh, particular expression as you can see this particular expression this is uh, this is also nothing but logit right this is logit so we can uh, the same thing uh, as we have uh, seen before we can write it in this particular form and therefore it will become logit uh, divided by 1 plus e logit so in this uh, form also we can write so this was the uh, model so from here you can see that if there is a unit change in x1 right x1 it is x1 plus 1 then the uh, corresponding uh, change in the uh, probability value of p is not going to be constant because the way the expression is right so the expression the one unit change in x1 the corresponding change in p uh, is going to depend on the actual value of x1 right so x1 uh, from this uh, you know ch ch uh, change in x1 and the corresponding change in probability value now will depend on the actual value of x1 as well however in other two formulation we can see a change in uh, a one unit change in x1 the corresponding change in logit was beta 1 one unit change in x1 here the corresponding change in odds values was was e to the power beta 1 however in this particular case from this particular expression uh, we can uh, derive that we can uh, detect that uh, the one unit change in x1 uh, and the corresponding change in probability value will depend on the actual value of x1 so we cannot eliminate x1 so therefore when we talk about the probability model the interpretation of the results would be for a specific observations right if uh, the interpretation depends on the actual value of x1 uh, the uh, the change uh, depends on the actual value of x1 so therefore probabilities values uh, can be interpreted should be inter interpreted for specific observations because uh, because uh, one unit change in x1 and the corresponding change in probability value will also depend on the actual value of x1 as well so when we talk about the probability model uh, we will discuss it in terms of uh, for with respect to uh, specific observations and general interpretation of uh, predictors and their importance can be done either through logit model or odds model so uh, uh, there is another important aspect that we would like to discuss here uh, this is between odds and odds ratio so in uh, so in many domains uh, these two uh, terms are uh, quite frequently used odds and odds ratio however they don't uh, however these two terms are not same they are different so the particular term odds uh, model in this particular case logistic regression model that term that we have been using so we had also given uh, uh, what we mean by odds, odds in our case in logistic regression model it was the ratio of uh, two probabilities value that is uh, probability of a, uh, if a probability of an of, uh, belonging to class 1 and a probability of belonging to class 0 so odds for our uh, logistic regression model it was probability of belonging to class 1 uh, divided by probability of uh, class uh, probability of belonging to uh, class 0 however another term odds ratio which is uh, also popular uh, in many domains so which is slightly different so odds ratio is actually ratio of two odds when we just say odds is it is the ratio of two probability values and when we say uh, odds ratio uh, it is actually ratio of two odds so odds of uh, for example uh, if we ha if we have a categorical uh, you know outcome variable or categorical variable having m classes and uh, there is m1 class and there is m2 class so we can uh, compare we can uh, you know we can uh, compute odds ratio uh, value uh, for these two classes so it can be computed using uh, ratio of odds of class 1 to odds of class uh, m2 so odds of class m1 divided by odds of class m2 so odds ratio is ratio of two odds values and uh, when we use just the term odds so it is ratio of two probabilities values 
in terms of interpretation uh, odds ratio when we say odds ratio greater than 1. So, for example, uh, in this particular case uh, odds of class M1 are high we can say that odds of class M1 are higher than uh, odds of class M2. However, in the, in, the, in the case of just uh, you know if we are saying odds and odds greater than 1, then we can say uh, that uh, uh, the probability of uh, uh, belonging to class 1 uh, or a particular class is uh, greater than the probability of belonging to class 0. Right. So, uh, the interpretation of, of uh, the definition of odds and odds ratios, uh, this difference we should uh, be clear about so that there is no confusion. Uh, when it comes to logistic regression model. So, what we will do, uh, we will uh, come back to uh, our studio and uh, the model that we have uh, developed uh, built uh, using all the predictors. So, this was the model mod 1. Uh, so, we had used the promotional offers data set and the promotional offer, offer versus all the uh, predictors. Uh, so, this model we had uh, built and summary results as you can see in the output here. So, this is the model that we had built in the previous uh, lecture. So, we had already talked about uh, these uh, in, uh, predictors income uh, and spending and then uh, family size and education HSC. So, these being the uh, significant predictors and if we look at just the 99.9 percent uh, confidence interval. Uh, the family family size, income and education HSC. So, these three uh, are the uh, significant predictors. So, uh, uh, we also we, in the previous lecture we also uh, cre created these two plots uh, probability versus odds and uh, probability versus logit and we saw how uh, from the odds model and logits model. So, using uh, you know uh, by analyzing these plots we can understand further how the uh, odds model and logit model can actually be used to uh, make interpretation about probability values right. So, uh, what we will uh, do uh, now we will uh, score the training partition the uh, test partition uh, training and test partition. Uh, using the, the model that we have just built. So, if we look at the test partition, so in this uh, as we can see the test uh, DF test uh, that we had already created, uh, we have 2000 observations here. So, uh, the model mod 1 will use the, so we are going to use the predict function to score of uh, this particular partition. So, a model is mod 1, uh, our logistic regression model with all the variables and then this is the partition we are for the clarity we are uh, not uh, including the outcome variable for scoring uh, the model. Then we have this another argument type. So, uh, this particular uh, variable uh, this particular uh, argument um, indicates uh, indicates uh, it gives us the uh, uh, values the estimated the logit values. So, uh, let us look at the help function because because we need to uh, model gives us the logit values then we need to uh, compute the probabilities values from those logit values. So, uh, please look at the uh, please look at the uh, this particular help section also for predict.glm. So, you can see that in predict we have a type and within type we have these th we can have uh, these three options link response and terms right. So, as you can see first I have used response. So, let us see what uh, these terms are about. So, within type here you can see the type of prediction required. So, the default is on the scale of linear predictors. Uh, the alternative response is on the scale of the uh, response variable right. So, uh, the response variable uh, in our case is uh, logit right because we have uh, built logistic regression model. So, probably uh, if we want to get the logit values we will have to uh, give this as an argument. Uh, so, this is uh, on a scale of response variable thus uh, and then uh, for a default binomial model, uh, uh, default binomial model, the default prediction are of log odds, and the probability is on logit scale. So you get the probability. So actually, from response, uh, we actually get the uh, probabilities values, 
right. So, if we want to get the probabilities values directly then uh, we will have to use this uh, response uh, uh, type right. And then we have terms option. Uh, so, uh, this will uh, return a matrix right. Uh, this will return a matrix giving the fitted values of each term in the model formula right. So, these are uh, three options that we have right. Then we have link as well. So, uh, let us use these uh, options and see uh, what the values are there. So, mod test. So, we will look at the uh, first six values of this particular uh, the, these particular scores. So, you can see for uh, the training partition observations uh, we can see here uh, the uh, uh, values. So, uh, these are the uh, these are the uh, probabilities values right. So, from these probabilities values these estimated probabilities values we can then uh, compute the uh, we can then compute the uh, uh, determine the classification we can do our classification. So, uh, the next one is uh, mod test L. So, here we are using the type as link. So, let us let us uh, compute this one as well. So, we will look at the first six values of this one. So, from here you would actually see that uh, this link uh, type actually gives us uh, the logistic values here, the logit values, right. So, you can see the values already they are in the negative side and uh, the earlier output that we saw, uh, these were probabilities values and the probabilities values are quite close to 0 and you can also see the corresponding logit values are uh, negative, right. And uh, uh, as we move forward, right, as we move forward. Uh, you can see this this particular this particular observation the value start uh, uh, you know the this uh, particular observation this value is uh, the logit value is positive and uh, here the probability value probability value is also close to one so in this fashion uh, we can see uh, the the plot uh, that we had uh, saw earlier so that is uh, the same kind of results we are able to see here. Now, uh, we just need probabilities values, uh, the mod test values that we have just computed uh, to assign uh, the observations to uh, uh, classify observations into different categories. So, if uh, because this is a, a, a two class case, so if the default value, uh, default cutoff value could be 0.5 to use the uh, most probable class method, uh, right. So, uh, we can use this particular uh, code. So, if else is the function that we can use and, and if the mod test value is greater than uh, 0.5 then we can as, uh, assign that observation into class 1 and otherwise class 0. So, this in this fashion we will have the classification. So, let us compute this. Let us look at the uh, first 6 values of this particular result. So, you would see for uh, different these uh, different observations uh, as indicated in the indices in the uh, test partition, the classification has been appropriately done. You can see uh, first three values, the probabilities values were also quite close to uh, 0. So, all have been classified as 0. The uh, this particular observation uh, number 10, so the probability value was close to uh, 1 in this particular case as indicated in the logit values as well and this particular value has been this particular observation has been classified as 1 class 1 and the others so because of the smaller probabilities values and negative logit values uh, the uh, the classification has been done to class 0. So, uh, once the classification is done we can uh, create our classification matrix. So, df test and promotional offer. So, this will have our actual values and the predicted values as we have computed just now mod test c. So, we will have our classification matrix. So, as you can see in the matrix uh, 1800 uh, observations uh, have been correctly classified as class 0 and then 113 observations have been correctly classified as class 1. And uh, then we have the 68 and 19 which have been in, in, in uh, correctly classified. So, uh, we can compute the classification accuracy and error numbers for the same. So, you can see. So, for the logistic model uh, using the particular data set that we have built, we get the 95.65 uh, percent uh, classification accuracy, right. 
and uh, uh, the error is point uh, error is 4.35 percent. Now, I would like to uh, uh, you know if you are able to recall that uh, previously uh, we had used the same data set using classification and, and regression trees and the uh, performance that we saw there was uh, you know for especially for training partition the kind of performance that we saw there was around 98 percent. So, the classification and regression tree as we talked about in, uh, in those lectures that it typically overfits the data. So, you can see here the performance is 95 and there it was 98 and when we had pruned the classification tree the performance had dropped down to uh, 97, 96 uh, uh, percentage. Uh, however, if we look at the, so if we look at the structured model like logistic regression, the performance was uh, performance is close to 95.6 and if we look at the data driven model like classification and regression tree, the performance was uh, you know something like 97. So, there is 2 percent uh, increase that we can uh, clearly see in a data driven models. So, with this we will stop here and we will continue our discussion on logistic regression in coming lectures. Thank you.